What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So if this is your first time visiting the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button along with that notify bell. Right now we are sitting at 479 subscribers, hoping to hit that 500 mark by the end of the year. Once I do hit that 500 subscriber mark, I will be giving away this Pro Wrestling Crate exclusive Sammy Callahan autograph. Um, when I do hit that 500 subscriber mark, I will be posting a video showing you guys how to enter to win that. So, on to last night's Impact Wrestling. I really enjoyed the show. I thought they did a very good job um, building the feuds toward Homecoming. We got another match added. All the matches made sense, had a reason to be on the show last night. I, I was very impressed. I enjoyed what I watched throughout the whole show. Uh, we open the show with number three for the Ultimate X qualifying match, Rich Swan versus Dave Chris. We saw Jake and Ethan Page advance last week. They will be in the Ultimate X match at Homecoming. Um, Jake, obviously, at ringside with Sammy Callahan. They get involved early. Jake drops Swan onto the apron. The two battle back and forth for a while. Swan misses a Phoenix splash. Dave goes for the square and compass, but... Swan rolls him up, and he gets the win. Um, Chris attack Rich Swan after the match. Sammy tells them to stop. Willie Mack comes down. He takes out the Chris. Swan gets up, and he holds Willie, Ma Willie Mack back. So Swan is holding Willie in this corner, and Sammy Callahan is holding the Chris in the other corner. The right man went over here. I think Rich Swan will be fantastic in the Ultimate X match. Um, it is interesting to note what took place at the end of the match. Figured they would have done something to lead to Sammy Callahan versus Willie Mack, but they still have plenty of time to do that. I think post-Ultimate X, they'll probably do something there. Um, we It did make sense with uh, Rich Swan warning Willie Mack not to mess with Callahan, so him holding Willie back made sense. Why Callahan prevented the Crisps from getting involved? That is what we are wondering about. So we go backstage, and Mackenzie's interviewing Moose. Moose says he is not worried about Eddie Edwards tonight because he is locked away. Uh, he says he's going to show Brian Cage why he is the legend. He, at the uh, beginning, he did say he bought a gift for Mackenzie, but one of his other girlfriends stole it, and then at the end he told Mackenzie to call him. Um, I just love Moose, everything Moose is doing right now. Um, I know back in Slammiversary when he had his world title opportunity against Austin Aries, I felt it wasn't time to pull the trigger on Moose. At this point where he has, you know, elevated himself and really embracing this Money Moose character, he's really come into his own. If they do decide to pull the trigger, I'm 100% behind it at this point. I have full faith in Moose now. Um, so, yeah, that's good. And he was fantastic. He faced Cage in the main event, and that, that was great, too. We'll get to that in a little while. Uh, backstage, we see Rich Swan and Willie Mack. Mack wants to know why he held him back, why Swan held him back. Sw Swan says he doesn't want to go down that road with Sammy again. The two have history. So, furthering that some more. Then we have the Taya and Tessa face-off. Josh Matthews in the ring. He hypes the Knockouts Championship match. He brings out both Tessa and Taya. They run each other down, have their own say things. Um, Josh then announces that Gail Kim will be the special guest referee for this match. We all knew they were going to add some sort of stipulation to the match. This made sense after what took place either last week or the week before. It was probably two weeks ago. Um, but I feel like this only supports... What I was saying, that we are going to eventually see Gale versus Tessa down the line. Completely behind that match. When it, If it does happen, probably save it for a big pay-per-view. But uh, I really enjoyed the segment. Both women came off really good. Uh, they both had strong points when they were talking back and forth. Taya, great uh, crowd reaction. If they pull the trigger and put the belt on her, wouldn't, wouldn't be mad. That, that's fine. Either of these women taking home the title will be good. Um... Even though this is the third time we are seeing both women in the ring in the last two months, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, they've really done a good job keeping this feud fresh, adding a little bit here and there. Um, and they really made it feel like it's going to be a big match at homecoming. So, uh, really good job with this segment. 
Uh, backstage, we see Tessa. She's obviously annoyed that Gail is, was announced as the special guest referee. She says that no one has taken the title from her, so obviously they're going to try and stack the odds against her. She says she respects Gail, but she says she will run through her if she gets in the way. So, again. Uh, and then we had match number four for the Ultimate X qualifying matches. Trevor Lee versus Trey Miguel. All I can really say is poor Trevor Lee. Um, it was rumored that he asked for his release during the set of Las Vegas tapings. Um, I think PW Insider had reported it, and then once word got out, Trevor said he is still Impact Wrestling star Trevor Lee, so I believe his contract comes to an end, the end of the month, so what happens there, we will find out, um, but I really think, um, I guess his early title reigns kind of hurt Trevor Lee, obviously the company changing hands so many times with him here, um, I guess they just didn't know where to put him right now. I mean, you figured they made so many mentions about him having a losing streak that they had a plan for him to turn it around. Um, like, I thought putting him with Scarlett would have made so much sense. You know, just her trying to clean him up, turn him into a gentleman, something like that. Um, I mean, they did make a point where I think Trevor shaved his chest at this point, and I think Josh asked Don if he liked him his chest better shaved or not shaved. It was just a little thing like that. Um, Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz were not present at ringside. I think that could have added to the match, having them present, because there were a point in time where the crowd was kind of silent, but very, very small gripe there, and that's not really even a gripe, but just, I think, a nice touch, because Trey was the one getting the crowd into it, um, so I think that would have just t taken the weight off him had they been on the outside. Uh, Trey moves around so well in the ring. This was a good showing for him as in what I believe is his first singles match in Impact. We got a handful of good spots, a bunch of nice reversals. Uh, Trey ends up hitting a very nice Hurricane Rana, holds the legs, and he pins Trevor Lee with, for the victory. Um, I really think they have something special with Trey Miguel. Um, I think he's going to be a huge part of Impact's future. He is only 24, shows great promise. Really high hopes for the kid. Um, it, I'm not really sure who's going to come away with this victory in Ultimate X. Um, I think Rich Swan might be the favorite. But it's interesting because all four of the men involved have counterparts. We have Jay Chris as his brother and Sammy Callahan. Um, Ethan Page has Matt Seidel. Trey Miguel has the rest of the Rascals. And Rich Swan has Willie Mack. So I don't know if any of these guys are going to play a factor into this match. So that, that's an interesting thing to note. Um, then we had a Lucha Brothers promo backstage. They said they are going to show LAX why they are the best in the world. And Phoenix hypes his match with Santana later on. Then we see Ali and Sue Young. Ali says the end is the beginning and the beginning is the end. The end is coming for Kira. Your time has come. So her voice was distorted. So it was pretty cool uh, effect. Her channeling her dark side, I guess. Um, Josh made mention that very casually, I might add that it said that he said, Ali, it will be Ali versus Kiera at homecoming. Um, they never made mention of this match actually happening at homecoming. I'm pretty sure they taped a match, the two of them at during the taping. So that might take place on the go home show. But, uh, like I said, they didn't announce anything, but Josh said it, it might've just been a screw up or it'll be something they announce, uh, when we come back in two weeks. Um, then we have the GWN flashback, more Ultimate X stuff. Then uh, LAX is backstage with Conan. Conan is obviously still pissed. He said he knew this was going to happen, and Conan ends up leaving and tells them they're going to have to face them without him. So, I mean, I think Conan is really going to play a part in the decision of this match. Um, obviously, I think commentary made mention that once Conan was absent from LAX, his side that they went on that losing streak when they dropped the titles and things like that so it's just a little bit of interesting uh information to note i mean it's the possibility of conan sides with the uh, lucha brothers if if anybody needs a mouthpiece it would be more them than lax this would kind of put them in their unfamiliar territory you know you could do something different here um and then that led us to santana versus phoenix um, I've said this before, I'll say it again, Santana has the potential to be a great singles competitor, um, he just looked fantastic in this match, going shot for shot, move for move with Phoenix, Santana hit a beautiful flip dive to the outside, landing on his feet, 
Uh, Phoenix hit a nice springboard moonsault to the outside. They had a really nice sequence leading to a rolling cutter by Phoenix that got a near fall. They both end up hitting reverse Hurricane Ranas on each other. The one that Santana took looked absolutely nasty. Ref checked on him, and as he was laying there, you could kind of see Ortiz look over and be like, you good, man? He threw up thumbs up. So it was just a little thing that I noticed that was pretty cool. Um, great back and forth action, a bunch of near falls. Phoenix was able to finally hit his finisher for the win, that muscle buster that he spins down. Um, but yeah, no, this was a very fun match. Great, great job. Really good showing for Santana in a singles match because I think Don made mention that he expected Phoenix to put Santana away pretty quickly, being the two or more known for singles wrestling. Um, but yeah, if this is this is just a preview of what's going to happen at Homecoming, and this this match can easily steal the show. Um, there's a lot of great matches going to be happening at Homecoming. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, then we have McKenzie interviewing Killer Cross. He asks Killer Cross about his intentions last week, and Cross goes, "It's all about perception." Uh, he says that Johnny can't do this on his own. The world is against him. Johnny interrupts, says he doesn't want anything to do with him to stay away. Cross says you can't even protect your own wife. Um, so at this point, Johnny gets pissed. He pushes Cross up against, I guess, a piece of fence. Um, Cross then says that's the guy that's going to beat Cage. Johnny tells him to stay away from him and Taya. This is a good segment. Cross's role really puts that question mark into what's going to play out in the main event and homecoming definitely makes that match that much more interesting um like i said it's just weird i was speaking with roe from the impact lounge about this um you know i said i feel like eventually johnny's gonna turn heel and join cross but then he said who does that leave as your top face to the company um so he makes a good point don't really have a good answer for that um, then we get Kiara Hogan. She says after last week, her friend Allie is gone. She says she would have Allie's back until the end. The end is here. Now it's time to fight. Um, this, I don't know if this was my favorite segment of the night. Like there were so many good things to happen throughout the show. So we head back to the loony bin. Raven's there playing chess with a new friend he met. All of a sudden, Eli Drake enters, speaks with Raven he says he wants to talk to the, to what I think he said, two-headed snake that inspired a generation of something that shouldn't be in wrestling, obviously meaning hardcore wrestling. He wants Raven to watch his match at homecoming to see him beat Abyss at his own game. Um, just Raven's obviously infuriating Eli by making a, joking around and just being a sarcastic SOB like he normally is. At this point, Raven calls his orderlies to take care of Eli because he knocked over the game board, much like uh, the guy they did last week. Um, so yeah, this this was a really good segment. Um, I didn't go into what Eli said because I kind of had a little back and forth, but every Eli had me hanging on every one of his words. He was very convincing with everything he said. He just felt it felt like everything had meaning to him. And then, like I said, Raven, he was just being a sar sarcastic SOB, and that was hilarious. Um, I really do hope that they end up utilizing Raven in some form or fashion, um, whether it's an on-screen character like this or maybe working backstage. He does have a great mind for the business. I think he will just add to what they already have. Um, then we had Ruby Rays versus Jordan Grace. Um, this was to further... Well, I guess further Katarina being the conniving person she is and trying to make, have people do her dirty work for her. Jordan starts off really strong. Katarina obviously getting involved. Um, she took every opportunity she could to get involved. We saw some really great display of power from Jordan Grace. She had Ruby Rays in the electric chair position and turned it into a power bomb out of the corner. Um, Jordan was the smaller of the two, so it was very impressive. Uh, Katarina once again tries to get involved, but Jordan grabs her, puts her in a muscle, uh, actually hits a muscle buster onto Ruby, and then Jordan hits the Vader splash onto both of them for the win. Um, the match was decent, but the result was good and definitely continues the feud for between Katarina and Jordan, and it helps Jordan get a few more victories under her belt. Uh, Jordan continues to impress after every victory. I really like what I, what we're seeing from her. I think she's going to be a huge, um, breakout star in 2019 for the knockouts division 
Uh, wondering if Ruby is going to be utilized again or if it was just a one-time deal for the Las Vegas tapings. She did have a Titantron and music and everything, so generally most of the enhancement talent just kind of is in the ring when somebody comes out. Um, but we will see. I don't know if Katarina is going to be, if this is going to last a little while and she brings new talent in each time. So it'll be interesting. I'm curious to see where they go with this. Um, yeah. So then we see the Desi Hit Squad backstage. They're all talking about Scarlet. She appears. They say that they have to be at the top of the talent search after their victory last week. Um, Scarlet says that KM and Falaba used to be at the top of the list, but they are now at the bottom. And she says that they need more momentum. So then she suggests the Hit Squad takes on KM and Falaba. So I believe that match is going to take place uh, on the go-home show for Homecoming. Interesting to see two weeks in a row with no KM and Falaba. Um, they're really a great duo. So, I mean, when they're on TV, I always love the segments they're put in. Wish they were here, but what are you going to do? Um, then we had the main event, Moose versus Brian Cage. This was a great match. The crowd was really into it. Moose and Cage both did a great job playing their parts. Moose can easily be number one heel in the company. If, if he is, I don't know if there's really a number one heel in the company with Austin Aries gone. Um, but I guess I would give him that spot. He just knows how to piss the crowd off. It's so funny. Like at one point, he was going to throw Cage into the crowd. Then he rolls him back in the ring and just basically flips off the crowd. Um both men definitely treated this match like a big deal. It definitely felt like a big fight feel. Very weird seeing Brian Cage on the defensive for a good portion of the match. We really haven't experienced it in his run with Impact thus far. I think this was one of his best showings. Like like I said, it was just a very different perspective on things. And that really added to it. Um, it, it was really good to see because when he was in the lower division, I, I guess if you want to call it that, with the X division, with it's a much smaller talent, so to speak. Um, he was the one doing the manhandling, and here he moves up to what is basically the main event, and he's actually having to fight for it. So I, I kind of like how they differentiate things that way. Uh, we saw Moose get a near fall with the go to hell. Like I said, so much good back and forth action. Moose hits a spear. Cage is able to roll out. He's able. He was selling his arm at this point. I think Moose was going to powerbomb Cage on the apron. All of a sudden, Eddie Edwards comes out of nowhere, still in his gown from the loony bin. He starts beating the crap out of Moose on the outside. He eventually finds Kenny, starts beating the crap out of Moose with it. Um, and then he was going to, uh, I guess, hit his finisher, but Moose was able to escape and run to the back. So um, I think it was announced maybe on Twitter that Moose and Eddie Edwards will be facing each other in a Falls Count Anywhere match, I believe, at homecoming. Um, I knew there should have been a stipulation for that. This is fine. It makes sense after what happened after the match. Um, I would have been fine with the cage match, too. I, we haven't seen one of those in a while, but I think that would have been cool. Um, that should be a great match. I'm very much so looking forward to that. I was a huge fan of their match at Final Hour, and I expect to be this one to be very good as well. Um, when both these men, anything they've been put together and they've excelled, uh, it exceeded, I guess, expectations. Um, but yeah, no, the show overall, this was a great way for them to end the year really on a high note. Um, the next two weeks will be best of shows, and then they'll be back January 3rd for the Go Home Show. So, like I said, I'm really looking forward to Homecoming. A lot of good stuff going in. It should be very interesting to see how the Nashville crowd is. I mean, we still have one more episode before that, but just a lot of a lot of positives heading into Homecoming. Um, so with that being said, two weeks of no impact or just the best ofs. I think I'm going to meet with uh, Ro from the Impact Lounge. We're going to do a video on what we'd like to see from Impact in 2019. I may be joining Robert Does Wrestling on his podcast, take a look back at 2018. Um, I may have some videos up here and there. Possibly we have the Twitch special tonight. I may be getting around to reviewing that. I still got to finish my YouTube video. And then I'll be back Sunday for my viewership report. So hope you guys enjoyed my review. Thanks for checking out my video. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Did you like that video? If so, click here to check out more great content. Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners Podcast.